If you like paradiddles, you're going to like this lesson. If you struggle with your paradiddles, you are going to love this lesson. Check it out. Hey, Kevin Prince from drummer101.com and I'm gonna give you three tips to get better paradiddles. But first, hit that subscribe button down below and then click the link in the description. If you're new to drumming, head over to my website and sign up for the free lessons. There's a free reference guide that I send you lessons straight to your email. So be sure to check that out. First of all, when you think of what makes a good paradiddle or what defines a good paradiddle, normally the first response is speed. Everybody thinks that the faster the paradiddles or the faster the rudiment, the better the drummer. And that's not always the case. There are a couple factors that help define what a good paradiddle is, and there's a few steps that are gonna help you get there, and I'm gonna give those to you right now. The first one is practice the paradiddles along to music. Pick up your Bluetooth speaker or put on your headphones and listen to a song, typically in 4-4 time, preferably, if you're just starting out, and listen for when that drummer hits the snare. That is where your two and four are gonna line up with your left hand of your paradiddle, your left, right, left, left. So you count your quarter notes, one, two, three, four. That left accent is going to line up with beats two and four of the drum beat. So I got a song pulled up right here and I'm gonna pull it up and play along with it. Here we go. You can hear the downbeats of one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And I'm just staying 16th notes for now. Okay, so step one, practice your paradiddle along to music. That's gonna help you get a sense of what the paradiddle sounds like in the real world with music. Step two is dynamics. If you can play a paradiddle all one volume, that doesn't do any good because you're not getting any dynamic range from there. There's no, there's no storytelling within that rudiment. You're just getting a And also, if you can play it fast at one speed, then that's not gonna do you any good either. And that might sound fine for some applications, but what I want you to do is play a paradiddle, but accent all your right hands and ghost note all your left hands. So your right hands are gonna be loud, your left hands are going to be soft. So you'll get this. Okay, good, so that doesn't really sound like a paradiddle. When you change the volume of each note, that tells a different story and it gives you a different feel. So practice on your pad or your snare drum, all right hands loud, all left hands soft. That's a start. You could obviously do the same thing with accenting your left hands and ghost noting your right and everything in between. But just stick with that for now and accent the rights, ghost note the lefts and work on your speed there. Okay, the third and the last thing I'm gonna to touch down on is movement. You can play it all in one spot, just like you can play it at one volume or one speed, and that's fine, but location around the drum set is also gonna to add to the story that your paradiddle tells. So if we were working on all the right hands being loud and left hands being soft, just move your right hand around to different surfaces and practice it slow. So you can get some cool drum fills that way when you start to get comfortable with it. You get something that sounds like this.
Okay, and the possibilities are endless with how creative and in-depth you want to get with the movement and the dynamics. You can combine both of those and get creative with the combination of both of those of movement and dynamics, and you can create your own style and your own sound. All right, so I'm going to play it for a little bit and just see whatever comes out. All right, so there it is. You have three different things you can think about when practicing your paradiddles and how you can make them sound and feel better.